Hey Bookaholics and welcome back to another video. Today I am bringing you a dedicated series review of The Of Blood and Bone Trilogy by John Gwynn. The Of Blood and Bone Trilogy is a sequel series to the Faithful and the Fallen series by this author and it consists of A Time of Dread, A Time of Blood and A Time of Courage. This trilogy is an epic fantasy series that is set a hundred years after the events of the Faithful and the Fallen. We are following some descendants from the characters in the Faithful and the Fallen as well as some new characters. We are seeing how the events of the first book have played out and how the world has been affected by these changes and we are definitely following some of my favourite characters that we've had. I'm loving being back in the Banished Lands and it just has this sense of comfort coming back to it but it's an all new series, it has a different tone to it, it was just a wonderful experience to come back. The characters in this series are as I said some of my favourites. We have several POVs, first of all we have Bledder and Jin. Jin and Bledder's parents have been at war with each other. They are two clans up north that are in conflict with one another. And as they are warring against each other, the Ben Elim intervene and decide that a way to force them to keep the peace is that they will take their heirs. So they will take their children. And then Bledder and Jin have been raised in the capital and they have been raised as friends, as the only person that they can understand and empathise with, despite the fact that their clans are warring clans. And the juxtaposition of their friendship is a fascinating one. Another character that we are following is Riv, who is the daughter of one of the White Wings. And she is training to become a White Wing herself. The White Wings are the warriors that work for the Benelim, who are these, basically they are like angels but not quite, more in the biblical sense than not. And we are following her as she is trying to become a White Wing. We're also following Drem, who is a young man who lives out in the middle of nowhere with his father. And then they are attacked by a bear and they need to try and essentially make their way home, make their way to safety. And he is unsure why they live so removed from society and it is his story. There's so much I could say about drama, I can't believe that's where he started out. And then we are also following several people from the Order of the Bright Star, which is a group of warriors that are dedicated to the peace of the land, an order that was started by our protagonist Corban in the first series. And then we are also following some of the villains. We are following some of the Kadoshim, who are monstrous beings that have been predominantly vanquished but they are beginning to gather strength once more and we're also following a young woman named Fritha who you don't really see a huge amount of in the first book but she is actually my favourite character for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> and this series is just incredible. It's just everything that you love about the faithful and the fallen but make it a bit darker, a bit grimmer. Not even grimmer because like there's darkness obviously in the faithful and the fallen. The thing with this one is that it has an element that feels almost horror. Like there is a POV in here that feels very much like paranormal horror. Like that's how dark this one gets. And I loved that. But it still has everything you could love about epic fantasy, everything that you could love about John Gwynn's writing style. I think that the characters for me in this one actually almost take a step up. Obviously, I love the characters from The Faithful and the Fallen and I'm really attached to them. But in this one, I think that even the young don't have the same level of naivety that the young in Faithful and the Fallen have because of their life circumstances, which basically means that you have these like super layered, super nuanced characters, like even the really young ones. They're not, they're not like the young ones at the beginning of The Faithful and the Fallen that are on a steep learning curve that have gone from, you know, farm boy kind of vibe. You have instead got these characters that from a really young age have had to confront the world. And I really love the way that he has transitioned from the piece that was at the beginning of The Faithful and the Fallen compared to the kind of peace that is at the beginning of 
of Blood and Bone. I think that this is one of the most beautifully written fantasy series. I really love John Gwynn's writing style because it's so concise and yet so beautiful. It manages to show how wondrous and how epic this world is. The vastness of it, the intricacies of the cultures and the societies. You can also see the way that the events of the first series are somewhat bastardized in law of this world in the hundred years that have followed. I imagine kind of the same way that we talk about World War II. There is just that level of like almost myth that goes down with it and I think that it's handled just so well in this series. You can see all of the grains of truth and then just a couple of things that are a little bit different. The thing is as well is that in this world you do have characters that are not immortal but have substantially longer lives and therefore you're seeing them how they saw the events of the Faith on the Fallen and now how they are living through the events of, of Blood and Bone and it's a fascinating contrast that I thought was also again immaculately handled. So for the most part this has got to be one of my favourite series of the year that I have read. It just has so many layers, so much to the characters. I love the way that this book feels like World War Two compared to book one's World War One. So all of the things that were still lingering, all the things that were compromised on and left slightly unresolved in the original series, and don't get me wrong, the original series feels like a completed series, but in the same way as everything always moves on, anything that was was, as I said, a compromise, anything that was brought in for the greater good or to help. How those decisions that were made at the time to end a war, to save the world, how the consequences of that have gone on in the sequel series are so intricate and so interesting and it doesn't necessarily always take the avenues that you expect it will and I just think that that was a really, really intense feat of creativity from this author because he is bringing forth this new world in a world you're really familiar with. This series gets so underhyped in my opinion, like everyone loves Faith on the Fallen and obviously with the release of the Bloodsworn saga everyone seems to now be rediscovering or discovering John Gwen for the first time and this one just got kind of overlooked because obviously you do kind of need to read all four Faith on the Fallen books before you read this one. I don't think it's absolutely necessary. I do think that you could get away with just reading this series but you would just miss a lot of things I think would potentially hinder your enjoyment slightly but I don't know because I've not read it without having read Faith on the Fallen so I don't know how much of it you could get away with. I just think that this is one of those series that really gets overlooked by this author and it's actually my favourite of his so far. I've not read Blood's One. I still need to read Blood's One but so far my favourite series by John Gwynn and my favourite book of the year is probably going to end up being A Time of Courage. High praise. I love this series so much. I need everyone to read it. If you have read The Faithful and the Fallen, I promise you it's worth continuing. Give it a little bit of time in between because you need to adjust to the changes in the world that have happened over the century of lack of books that we have had. So you might not want to read them back to back, but if you've read Faithful and the Fallen at any point, I would highly recommend picking up of blood and bone especially if you like your fantasy to get a bit like i said darker and creepier at times or while also having these young hardened people that are driving forth the plot but that is it for this review so i hope that you've enjoyed and I, i'd love to know if this is a series you've read and your thoughts on it especially if you have read more by john Gwynn, where this falls for you in terms of preference let me know also if you have read the series another series that you think has that similar atmosphere i would love to know because i'm always on the prowl for, for new favourites. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll hopefully catch you in another one soon. Bye!